Hey Cougars, welcome to this video. This is our 2.4 video notes. So first we have our quick review question. If you will go into your notes right under the learning intention and work this problem out as best you can. Do your best, do it on your own so that when I'm back in class, you can ask questions. Let's go ahead and pause the video and work that out for me. All right, welcome back. So our learning intention for today is I can interpret the relationship between net force, mass, and acceleration as depicted in graphs and tables. So we've been talking about net force, Newton's second law, and how it's all connected. We've learned about force net, the net force equals mass times acceleration. So what does that look like in a graph or a table? So our success criteria, first, we're gonna interpret graphed and table data sets to determine when a net force is being applied. So we're just gonna look and see, is there a net force? 2.4.2, I can compare data sets in terms of net force applied and relate it to the mass that's being moved. So we're gonna be looking at, if I have some information, what force is being applied, if any, and then we're gonna look at some and go, what kind of mass are we dealing with? So second law relationships. So we've looked at the relationship between net force, mass, and acceleration over the last couple of days. And we looked at what happens if the force is held constant and the mass goes up. We said the acceleration would go down because it's on the same side of the equation. So today we're gonna use those relationships that we learned through an equation. And we're gonna look at what's going on in a graph and a table. So let's take a look. So remember, we hold force the same. Like I just said, if mass goes up, acceleration goes down. See how it's on the same side of the equal sign? The thing we're holding constant over here, it's on the same side. So they're gonna do the opposite of each other. Remember, we wrote that in our notes. If they're on opposite sides of the equation, so if we hold mass constant and do not change the object or the mass of the object, if force goes up, then acceleration must also go up. So if they're on opposite sides of the equal sign, they're gonna do the same thing, okay? And if they go down on one side, they will go down on the other side, okay? If acceleration is held constant, if the force goes up, then the mass must go up as well. Why? They're on opposite side of the equation, and so they must do the same thing. Okay? So, if you need to pause it, go ahead and pause it and finish filling in that part of your notes. So, how do we do this based on position information? So we know that net force and acceleration are directly proportional. That's the word we use for things that do the same thing. So if force goes up, acceleration goes up, they're directly proportional because they do the same thing. That's what directly proportional means, okay? We also know that if an object changes its motion, so I speed up or I slow down or I change direction, then we have acceleration. If I have acceleration, I gotta have a net force. So speeding up, so in other words, speeding up means I'm gonna cover more displacement over time. So I'm gonna go further in a single instant. So a high displacement is a big change. A small displacement, a small change, okay? So if both of those took only one second, which one had the higher velocity? The one with the bigger change, okay? So, this means the force is acting in the same direction as motion, helping. So in other words, if I'm speeding up, something has to be causing me to speed up, okay? So if I'm speeding up, make these so you can see, getting farther apart each second, something has to be pushing me. So the force is gonna be acting in the same direction or helping me. If I'm slowing down, 
Ready, set, go. I start fast, so I'm going to go a large distance, and then I'm going to slow down. Then the force has to be in the opposite direction. Okay. That means I'm the force is opposing motion. So if I speed up, my force has to make me speed up. If I slow down, if I start fast and slow down, the force has to be going in the other direction to slow me down, okay? Okay, so according to Newton's first law, we can identify that an object is accelerating from a graph or a table, then we know that net force is acting on the object. So if we can determine if an object is accelerating, we know it's accelerating, we know it has a net force. So that's what we're gonna look at. If it's accelerating more, then it's gonna have a bigger force. Okay, so let's look at this. So let's look at some graphs. So we have two graphs here. We have a curved line, we have a straight line, but I want you to I want to point out to you that on the curved line we have a graph that has displacement or position. So we're going to call it delta D and time. Okay? Position and displacement are not necessarily the same thing, but for this class they're close enough. But we have something like this. Why is this what is this doing? Is this accelerating? Is the force helping? Is the force against motion? What do you think? Okay. So, it's a delta D versus T graph. If we look at the change, how much is it changing? In the first little bit, it's not changing very much. We've got a smaller change here when we, where we begin. See this change right here? It doesn't go up very much. But over here, there's a bigger change. And then over here, it's a lot bigger change. So the change is increasing or speeding up, which means it's accelerating. So the force must be in the same direction. It's got to be helping the thing get faster and faster and faster. In other words, if I'm getting faster, something has to be pushing me to make me go faster. So acceleration, speeding up, okay? So since the object is speeding up, there must be a net force acting in the direction of motion. If I'm speeding up, the net force has to be in the same direction as the motion, okay? Sorry, you try. What's this one doing? Ooh, what kind of change do we have? So let's look at, uh, pick a place and let's do some change. So if we start at the beginning, we have a change of zero of negative 100 in the first two seconds. You see that if we drop down to negative 100 and then go over all the way over to two seconds, okay? If we drop down from negative 100 to 200, okay, that's a change of another 100 seconds. In other words, if you actually measure and calculate the change along this entire graph, you're going to see that the change is constant. If there's a constant change, is it accelerating? No, it's constant speed, right? Remember that? Constant speed. So if it's constant speed, it is not accelerating. So there is no net force. Ooh, tricky. Got to be careful. Okay, so this graph actually means we're moving in the negative direction. Okay, because it's sloping downward. And... It's constant speed. So the net force is equal to zero. Okay, now, is there a forces acting on this object? Maybe, but they're in balance with, you, with each other. They're canceling each other out, so it's not gonna speed up, it's not gonna slow down. Okay, so that was graphing. Pretty simple. Look at the title, and you can see that if it's accelerating or not. We're going to look at another case that's a little different with a graph in just a second. But let's keep it simple. Let's look at some tables interpreting net force. Okay? 
So it has to be accelerating for there to be a net force. So let's look at this first table. So to find out if it's accelerating, we've got to look at the change. What's the change between the first step? Okay? It's a change of 5. What's the change for the next one? 27 minus 20 is 7. Ooh, is that change the same? No. So that might be a sign of something. Oh, the change is different every time. So, is it accelerating or not? It is accelerating because it's changing. The change is changing. That makes sense. The change is changing, so it is accelerating. Now, which direction is this change? Is it in the direct is it speeding up? Is it in the direction of motion or is it against motion and causing the object to slow down? So how do we know, if we look at this, the numbers are increasing. So we start at 5, which is smaller than 7, which is smaller than, so these numbers are getting bigger. So the change is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So the force must be in the direction of motion. It is speeding up, okay? So look at the next one. We got plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, plus 6. The change is increasing. Okay, so we go to find the change. Remember, 3 minus 0 is 3. 7 minus 3 is 4. 12 minus 7 is 5. 18 minus 12 is 6. It's increasing, so the force has to be in the direction of motion. Okay, next one. It's increasing. Force has to be in the direction of motion. And... This last one is not changing. Look at that. 2 minus 1 is 1. Then go to the next one. 3 minus 2 is still 1. So these, these changes are not changing. See how it's a difference of 1, a difference of 1, a difference of 1, a difference of 1. So is that one accelerating or constant speed? It's constant speed, so no acceleration, no net force, or net force equals zero, okay? Now, here's a question. Which one of these objects is experiencing the greatest force? What do you think? Greatest force between the four. That one's accelerating the most, so guess what? It's got to have... The greatest force okay and then accelerating the next most what's the third most third most and the least most not accelerating okay so most force has got to be that one that's accelerating the most so most net force second most for net force third most net force and zero or no net force Okay, so this is actually should be really simple as long as you keep straight. Is it accelerating or is it constant velocity? Now we already know how to do that. We look at how are these numbers changing? 5 plus 15 equals 20. 20 plus 7 equals 27. 27 plus 9 equals 36. 36 plus 11 equals 47. How did you get those? You subtracted them, right? 47 minus 36 equals 11. Okay. Okay. 